Welcome to Ask Stephanie McCarvel's YouTube channel. This video is part 4 of the repair title How to Replace the Cylinder Heads on Dodge 4.7 liter engine. The vehicle we're working on right now is a 2002 Dodge Durango. The previous owner overheated the engine and when we bought it, it was running rough and it had a little bit of water in the oil. So it's very likely that the cylinder heads are slightly warped. Right now, we're in the process of removing them. Once we take them off, we'll inspect them and we'll have them repaired by the machine shop and we'll show you how to install them back on with the new gaskets in more upcoming videos. For the viewers that found this video while searching the web, this is where we're at. We have removed all the accessories from the engine including the valve covers. Right now we still have the timing cover and I'll explain as I do this video why, still, why the timing cover is still there. When removing the cylinder heads on this type of engine, because it's an overhead cam design, it takes a little bit of precaution. The next step is going to be removing the rocker arms. That way, when we remove the timing chains on both sides, there is not a risk of piston to valve contact as the camshaft rotate, because the last thing we need now is to have bent valves, so we don't want to create any more damage. To be able to remove the rocker arms, it's necessary to compress the valve springs. And you need a tool similar to this. This actually is designed for Ford engines. This is the part number. I had the need to modify this tool to make it work on the 4.7 liter. What I did, I ground this edge right here because otherwise it wouldn't go inside the cylinder head plus I made this opening wider with a grinder also to be able to slide this in between the rocker arm because otherwise it wouldn't go in. I wasn't too excited to modify such expensive tool you know this is a hundred dollars this tool right here so I had two options either modify the one Modify this one I already had, which was made for four engines, or buy the one that is designed for 4.7 liter. Well, since I didn't see the need to have two, I went ahead and modified this one, even though, like I said, I wasn't too excited to chop such an expensive tool. Keeping things organized is crucial you know, for the next steps. So one of the things you want to do is find yourself a box, a small box and put an arrow, whatever you want to do, um, where it shows where the front will be. Because what you're going to be doing is, the lifters and the rocker arms, you're going to be placing them in their original locations in your box, you know, as you go from front to back. And we're doing that inside the box, obviously. I'm just showing you here. Um, so as you remove each one, you place them accordingly that way when you reassemble this engine you put the components back where they were so it's important to do that so make sure you find yourself a box and mark it before using this tool to compress the valve springs there are a couple of things that you need to consider the valves need to be closed Okay. so see the lobes on the camshaft right here when this part is down the valve is open and when the other part of the cam is touching the rocker arm the valve is closed so right now I got both of these closed because the lobe is open you know the lobe is over on this side so this one is closed and the lobe is over here so it's also closed so I'm going to be able to remove these two without having to rotate the engine what you're going to have to do to remove the rest is turn the engine because see like this one right here you wouldn't want to compress it right now like this one you have to rotate it because it's in the open position just keep that in mind as you do it but I'm going to show you how to do this side and then you'll get the idea on how to do the rest okay so position the tool placing the cam lobe in between these two right here and then slide this part in between the rocker arm and the valve spring like that and then so remember I said I had to uh, modify this tool because without grinding it down right here 
I wasn't going to be able to get it in there. So that's why I had to modify it. But it goes in now. Once the tool is in place, use a 3H drive ratchet to apply pressure by moving it this way. And that's going to compress the spring. And as you compress the spring, you'll be able to pull the rocker arm out like that. So there's the rocker arm. And you can get the tool out. And remember, and remember to place it on the box, knowing which location it came out of, so you reinstall it back when you get your heads back. Once the rocker arm has been removed, go ahead and pull the lifter out. And when you remove the lifters, try to press on them. Make sure there is no play on them, on this part. If this part has play right here, the lifter is bad and you need to replace them. The last thing you want to do is go through this entire amount of work, put it all back together and have a noisy engine because you have collapsed lifters. So take plenty of time to inspect each one, make sure they're good and place it in their original locations. Alright, so obviously for the second rocker arm you're not going to compress the lifter, right? You don't want to damage that, so you got to compress the spring over here so you'll just have to place the tool on this side of the cylinder head to remove the rocker arm instead of this side the way you did it to remove the very first one and just continue on with the rest and then like I said make sure the valves are closed when you're compressing the spring to remove each rocker arm to rotate this engine use a 13 16 socket and the crankshaft center bolt and then just Rotate the engine by turning the handle clockwise. Don't do it counterclockwise, it has to be clockwise in the normal rotation of the engine so you don't create too much slack on the chains. And another thing too, if you can, if you can place the, each lobe on the camshaft all the way up when you're removing the rocker arms, then that's going to make it even easier. Plus you'll make sure that the piston is not halfway up or halfway down and then you may still have a possibility of damaging the valve when you're trying to compress it you know to push it down so just another tip there's the next lifter it's nice and solid so it's good plus this engine didn't really make noises so I know they're good but I'm still gonna inspect them all and then, like I said just continue doing that with all of them alright so this is some of my first half of lifters and rocker arms looks like when it's organized in the box. To make sure that they're not even going to get mixed, I'm just going to fold this paper over them and I'm going to go ahead and start the other ones on this side for the cylinder head on the driver's side. This next step is a little bit of time consuming. You're going to be using your ratchet and your socket to turn your engine and you're going to keep turning it by hand, spinning it in a clockwise direction, in a clockwise motion until you get this different color link a line that has a dot and a dot right there plus the V8 mark uh, on each camshaft broken needs to be up this is the left side of the engine so you got the left dot aligned with the different color link and you have the V8 aligned and same thing on the other side, you can see it, you got the V8 mark, you have the color link, and then you have the right, the R for the right camshaft aligned. Now, on top of that, on your harmonic balancer, there's a TDC mark on the timing cover, right there. And then the, the mark on the harmonic balancer needs to align with the TDC mark. So you want to get those settings right it's going to make your life a lot easier because to reinstall it all the marks need to match. So by knowing how you took it off and making sure everything was aligned correctly before you disassemble everything you're going to understand it better when you have to put it together. Now this is a three chain setup. You got one 
you got two and you're gonna have another chain in here I'll show you in a second once we remove this timing cover and then I'm gonna show you where those marks need to be aligned but for right now make your life easier align this dot on each camshaft to make sure that the VA mark is up plus your harmonic balancer is aligned with the TDC mark on the timing cover once all the marks are aligned remove the crankshaft center bolt air tools is probably your best bet because that way the pulley won't rotate when you when you loosen it otherwise you're going to hold the pulley with the crankshaft pulley holder while you loosen the bolt once the crankshaft center bolt has been removed Insert a small bolt that goes inside the cavity without touching the threads. This will give support for the puller that you're going to have to use. You're going to need a 3 jaw puller that's going to hook into these three tabs that the harmonic balancer has for this particular purpose. And here's the 3 jaw puller. It's made to remove Chrysler harmonic balancers. The set also came with this adapter that is meant to go inside the cavity where the center bolt was but for the 4.7 liter this ends up being too short I wouldn't be able to use the puller with it so that's why I ended up using this bolt instead of the actual adapter once the puller is attached correctly then go ahead and turn the screw clockwise and then obviously what that's going to do is going to pull the puller out Make sure you hold it with one hand as you turn this with the other so you don't lose your timing mark and it stays in place. I ended up having to put a socket in between it to be able to finish taking it off. That's why there's a socket in there. This is the end of part 4 of this video series. On the next video I'll show you how to remove the timing cover, how to remove the timing chains, and of course how to remove the cylinder heads. This is a bit of a lengthy process and I could make these videos a lot shorter, maybe even less videos, but the instructions wouldn't be as complete. So, since I'm not in a rush to finish this job, I'm taking the time to show you step by step. That way when you decide to do your own vehicle, ideally you shouldn't have any questions. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you'll know when the new video comes up. Also don't forget to visit our online store. We have a great selection of accessories for cars, trucks and SUVs. See you next time.